Hey everybody, it's Andy here coming to you from Heads and Tails Sailing Reviews, also known as Heads and Tails Coaching, which is my business. Uh, and as I told you in my last video, which was the review of the Fortress Anchor, great anchor, you know, could be a main anchor, but definitely the best second anchor you can have on a boat. Uh, today, I'm going to take you on a, a tour of the new project. This is a 1999 uh, Richard Woods Flicka, home built in foam sandwich, built in uh, South Africa, uh, and launched in 1999. Uh, and I think this is my final boat, five boats in two years. And uh, yeah, I think this, I found the one that is it. Anyway, enough about me blabbling, let's get to it. So, uh, like with any project, you can see it's uh, still in a mess. The large dinghy there uh, we sold, it's a 3.5 meter rib, a little too big for the, the flicker to be carrying around. But uh, yeah, so here we are underneath the boat, uh, underwing, rubbing strakes, um, you know, wave breakers, the whole thing. Sail drives, of course, had to take them out, get them serviced, just still waiting on parts to put them back together and uh, slightly longer keels uh, than I remember on, our, on my other Flicka. Um, so we'll see how that sails, I'm, I'm sure pretty good. But uh, you know, like everything, this boat started out with the, the bits that I didn't have on my other Flicka, and that is the extended transoms with the transom steps. Uh, it adds about three and a half feet, three feet, and, uh, but cleans up the exit of the water. So this boat's a full 12 meters. Uh, so we should get a little extra speed and definitely less hobby horsing. Has these great dive ladders. These unclip, they just mount onto uh, a block here and they just slide out and then they get put up uh, on the back deck into a couple holders. Uh, the structure of this boat was really, really good. It was here on the hard for six years, sort of abandoned. The owners moved away uh, back to England. And, um, you know, like all boats, there was things that I, you know, scuff marks and stuff that I needed to fix up. I did remove nine through hulls. Uh, seven of them were underwater, two were above water. Uh, you know, because the boat had four heads on it in, in, in 12 meters, uh, which I thought was ridiculous. So I removed uh, three of them, uh, two electrics and one manual, and uh, took all them out. Uh, it has a you know, normal four beam structure. Uh, it carries a, a Delta anchor, a 20 kg, which I'll do a review on soon. Uh, new trampolines, I'm, I haven't had this fine mesh trampoline before. Uh, I've always had open weave or like cargo netting. Uh, so if anybody wants to drop me an opinion, uh, I'd really you know, uh, value your opinion. opinion. Uh, head sails on a furler. I went up the mast the other day and everything seems okay. It's, you know, the rigging's old, but it's serviceable. And, you know, there were no broken wires, no cracking or anything like that in the fittings. And all the lines were still good. We took them all down, laundered them best we could. And, uh, you know, so they're gonna be able to be serviced, uh, serviceable for, for the next while anyway, and, and replace them as we go. As everybody knows, you know, budgets on these things blow out. And uh, one of the things that uh, I have to do is, of course, repair the engines because sitting so long they were in a terrible state and they would really neglected them. So, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, something I have to do. Uh, great back swim deck. I'm going to take, take you up on board and we'll do an exterior tour here. Great sw back swim deck and, of course, uh, an arch system to support the solar panels. Now, I'll take the three little solar panels out. They don't appear to be working. I, I need to test them for sure. But I was given two uh, 150 watt panels from another sailor uh, who couldn't use them on his boat. So I'll put those up there and get them wired in. Uh, swim platform is awesome because of course it's wider because of the extensions. Our, our last flick had a good sw swim platform but it was a little narrow. And of course dinghy davits, it's the first time we've had this on a uh, boat uh, where we can bring the dinghy right up on this deck. Walk through transom. I, you know, I realize, you know, yes, breaking seas could come in out of the stern, but I tell you, this makes it so nice to um, go in and out of the cockpit. This is the best cockpit on a boat we've had so far. You know, five boats in two years. Uh, this is a great, great cockpit. Storage in the aft two lockers, and the driving position, steering position on this boat is awesome. Um, you know, I've just replayed. Uh, 
took out uh, where the old gauge holes were to put tactics uh, mounts back on there and of course found a little bit of damage underneath the the shifters there so i've got to sand and paint all that so don't get too critical uh but what we doesn't have is a seat uh to sit on when you're steering uh, not a necessary item but uh you know it would be nice to have and so if you've got an idea for you know how i could use a fold away seat or something that's not going to eat up the cockpit seating uh, that would be fantastic. Great bimini. Uh, they must have put a lot of thought into the bimini when they built this boat. You can stand on it. And, uh, of course, the traveler system is up on top, which means a real short main sheet uh, block and tackle system. Uh, it was damaged, so I have to replace it. It was a six, of, six to one, and so I'll keep it uh, with that. But I'm going to put a Dyneema strop around. Uh, through those fittings and then attach it to it. So I think it'll be a little bit stronger and a little bit more flexible, not so hard on fittings, etc. Of course, all the lines run down through into the cockpit. Same from the mast. They had all lines except the main sheet uh, running back down into uh, the cockpit. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that. Uh, I like the main sheet at the mast, that's fine. The reefing lines I think I'll take back for sure. There's no reason to run the head sail line uh, back to the cockpit because it's, it's, you know, it's on a furler so it's locked up there full time. Uh, it has lazy jacks, I just need to put them back on of course. And a boom bang, I've never had one of these before. I'm not sure if this is working uh, well. It seems to stop the boom from going down all the way but it doesn't seem to stop it from going up, and I thought that was kind of the point. So I, I think I'm going to have to dismantle it. It is a Sparcraft setup, so I, I may have to contact them to find out what uh, is going on. Awesome foredeck on this boat. Uh, the tramps are a little smaller than on our last Flicka, uh, and it gives it a little bit more foredeck space. Uh, they've got good deck tread on here. Of course, I've got the, the sails all laying out here because I took them down to, to wash them in. They need quite a bit of mending. You can imagine they've just been sitting around for six years, half exposed. Uh, so the head sail, I'm not sure if it's going to be serviceable or not, but I'll do some mending on it and hopefully it can get us out of here to Puerto Rico. And um, we have a little tiny stay sail, a storm sail, which I'll keep uh, mounted on the inner stay here. Uh, we've had one on all our boats and I love that little inner sail. It's ready to go all the time. And the main... Uh, it needs a bit of work, but it's it's going to go for now. It's a, a fully battened, slab-reefed main, loose-footed, uh, which I'm used to, uh, and so I'm pretty keen on that. Uh, a rope locker and an anchor locker. Both of them have a lot of space, an old junk anchor in there that we need to get rid of, um, but a really, really great foredeck. And they put into the uh, deck tread these dolphins, uh, one on each side, uh, which is, is kind of a neat thing. It, we do have a life raft. This is the first catamaran we've had a life raft on. I'm sure it's way out of date. I haven't even looked at it, but uh, uh, I don't know if we'll get it recertified or not. Um, I've heard bad things about them, so uh, we still need to get a dinghy. Um, I'm thinking about just a, a straight roll-up uh, dinghy, a small one, 2.4, maybe 2.6 meters, uh, very lightweight, uh, we don't have a motor for one right now, so I'm, I'm actually even weighing up the idea of whether or not to get a dinghy, but uh, or, or to get a kayak maybe. Uh, so if you have opinions on that too, I'd I'd love to hear uh, from you and uh, you know uh, make a good decision. We're here in 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 Curacao or Curacao. I've heard it pronounced both ways. It's really expensive to get stuff down here, so uh, you know I'm trying to get as much done as I can. Sail. Uh, out to Puerto Rico or USVI or somewhere like that where we can get access to uh, you know some used stuff and cheaper parts etc etc uh, you know to help the fit out but it's very complete the structure of the boat's awesome the bimini is set up as a, as a water catcher the whole thing it's got a fitting on each side and uh, get some hoses on there so we can catch rainwater <clears throat> it has an old water maker but it's it because it's been sitting around, it wasn't pickled. It's uh, uh, an AC setup, a huge AC motor and stuff on it. And of course, we have a gen set, which isn't working either, a diesel gen set. Um, so I'm not sure whether those two things are going to stay on the boat or not. Um, you know, sail drives and Volvo engines is great because, uh, you know, you end up with the better fuel economy and a lot more power. But you guys know I'm an outboard sort of guy. And, uh, 
you know, I, I'm thinking way lighter and and stuff. But uh, our other flick that had the diesels and it was really, really good. So, again, uh, if you've got an idea for a dinghy, uh, drop a comment. If you've got an idea for a seat at the helm station, drop me a comment. And if you've got anything that you would like to say about how to rig this boat up uh, so that we can continue cruising around the world, let me know. But I think this is the one. Uh, I'm very, very happy with it so far. And like with everything, there's a few things to do, but uh, it's all sort of just neglect stuff. Uh, hatch seals and broken hatch clasps, as you can see there. And, you know, things that we need to do, but nothing too serious. It's just mainly to get the engines going and uh, get out on the water and, and see it sail. I'm, I'm sure it's going to sail much better than our other Flicka, and, and that Flicka sailed awesome. So... You know, having the extra length, I think, will be really, really, really great. Anyway, this is Andy signing off with you. You guys have a happy new year and uh, watch for my review videos. Remember, Heads and Tails Sailing reviews all about the equipment that we're using right now and that we've used over the last two years sailing around the world and thousands and thousands of miles of sailing. Uh, so, you know, listen to those reviews and check out the project. I'm going to try to do one video a week on the project. Next day, I'll do a tour of the interior and show you. Anyway, have a good one. It's Andy. Thumbs up to y'all.